I had a little book given to me by one of my preacher friends out in Vegas by Major N. Thomas on the indwelling life of Christ. And it's just really been speaking to me. He made this statement. He said, the human soul, soul is uh, explo exploited by the subtle principle of sin within and clearly defines the conflict within you. And then he made this statement. He said, on, on one part of you says, I acknowledge and agree that the law is good, morally excellent, and that I take sides with it. I endorse and delight in the law of God my inmost self with my new nature. In your human spirit, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness to all that is good and right and noble, to your enlightened moral conscience. Every act and attitude of sin is an offense. But then he went on to say this. Then there's the other part of you, that sin principle which dwells within you, fixed and operating in your soul, Romans 7, 20. He says, when you quit exchanging courtesies with the flesh and repudiate it to its face, naming it for the treacherous, wickless, wicked, worthless thing that it is, you're well on your way. I'm telling you, by the power of God and by the grace of God, there are things that Jesus empowers us to literally just say no to. I just need to say no to this and move on to be what God would have me to be. He said at the climactic stage in your Christian life, you realize that there can be no compromise with the flesh and that peaceful coexistence with the principle satanically hostile to the law of God and to the reestablishment of his sovereignty within your soul is now beyond the bounds of possibility. And it just, it's just good. It goes on and on and on. Just speaking. There's a war going on. And we have to say yes to Christ and surrender to God. And by the overwhelming, empowering grace of God, he's the one who makes us a victor. It's not pulling myself up by my own bootstraps that I can be what God wants me to be. Matter of fact, in this word of self-control, normally when it was being dealt with in the life of the first century followers, they would use it in the, in, the con, in the context of a contest, of a fight, of a run. Listen to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Or everyone who competes for the prize is temperate. That means he exercises self-control in all things. Oh, Thayer, that great Greek scholar, says the athletes in preparation for the games abstained from unwholesome food, wine, and sexual indulgence. In other words, they had to say no to something in their life in order to compete. So I wonder why Peter or Paul did not mention a detailed list of things concerning self-control that maybe would cover every situation. Now listen carefully to this statement. Oh, why didn't it just a list there, a checklist? Here's the things you need self-control over. Martin Luther many, many years ago, made a statement concerning that. He said, people are not alike. One is strong, another is weak by nature. And no one is always as fit in every aspect as the other person is.